This is an interview with J. Krishnamurti by Gerald Priestland at Brockwood Park, 1976. More than 60 years ago, when he was a 13-year-old boy in northern Madras, Jiddu Krishnamurti was adopted by the leaders of the Esoteric Theosophical Society as the vessel of the coming Messiah. Chief among the Theosophists was that remarkable socialist, mystic and friend of India, Mrs. Annie Besant, of whom more in a moment. Eventually, in his thirties, Krishnamurti renounced the divine role which had been thrust upon him, but he's continued to this day traveling and teaching in East and West. His latest collection, Krishnamurti's Notebook, is just published. It's in diary form, each day beginning with a passage of sensitive description of nature. He's very fond of clouds and of pigeons. And then into a sequence of contemplation, which may end, for example, it is innocency alone that can receive the timeless, the new which is ever destroying itself. Destruction is creation. Without love, there is no destruction. Krishnamurti is now 81. He spends a few months every year at the school run by the Krishnamurti Foundation at Brockwood Park near Petersfield in Hampshire. It's a gracious country house surrounded by tall trees and grazing sheep. After a crisp vegetarian lunch, which I thoroughly enjoyed, thank you, we sat together and I asked, could he recall for me his remarkable patroness, Mrs. Besant? She always treated me as a son and a guru, a combination of both. She was a very authoritarian person, very strong, very, mm, you know, commanding person. And she was head of the President of the Congress in India and went against Gandhi and so lost all sense of popularity in India. But she didn't care. She, she said, that's wrong what you're doing. Do you feel that uh, there was a time when you were being sort of molded and exploited by these people? No. Not by Dr. Besant. Never. But the others wanted to. So how did you get the strength to strike out in your own direction? I don't think it matter of strength. Mm. I was worshipped as, you know, candles and all the rest of it. And I said, this is all wrong. Not because uh, personal worship of a person is absolutely meaningless. So I saw that and dissolved the whole thing. It wasn't a will of effort, but it wasn't a, a sacrifice. It wasn't a, an action of will at all. I said, to have property, money, position, for a religious teacher, it's all wrong. So. What do you think of the long procession of Hindu religious leaders who have um, passed through the West since your time, and many of them made a lot of money? Do you think there really is any understanding of what they're conveying, or is it a fraudulent thing? I think it is, to put it mildly, exploiting people. It's a racket? It's a racket. Like this. Transcendental meditation, you've heard about it. You think that's a racket? Obviously. You pay a man 100 or 200 pounds or 30 pounds or 100, 200 dollars and he gives you a mantra. Hmm? And you repeat it. You can repeat just as well Coca Cola or some name of a beer. And you think you've achieved some kind of tranquility and call it transcendental. It isn't meditation at all. These various forms of mantras repetition is in the hope of bringing about that silence, which is really makes the mind more dull, more stupid than it is. But there must be no conflict. That's the essence of meditation. You understand? Because conflict implies duality, opposites, opposing desires, opposing thoughts, opposing demands. 
So where there's conflict like between two nations, Arab, Jew, Hindu, Muslim and so on, where there is division there must be conflict. So in this process there is no observer. You say you don't read books. I mean, do you make a, a positive merit of this, that you are no. uncontaminated by other people's mm. ideas? You know, first of all, I haven't read any so-called secret books, Gita. I've read the Bible, the Old Testament, not the New Testament, because I like the language. That's one of the... You, you have never read the New Testament? No. It's too sentimental for me. <laughs> Sorry. It's, after all, written by disciples. After sixty or a hundred years, you can invent anything you like. So it's... But the Old Testament has beautiful language. <laughs> Simple, clear. I like that kind of... You uh, attach great importance to words and the clarity of definition and expression, yes. or does it ever seem to you that words can't contain your meaning? Yes, yes. Word, the word is not the thing. The description is not the described. Jiddu Krishnamurti, whose notebook is published by Golantz at four pounds.